Hello and welcome to Tesla Gurus. I'm John and today I'm just out for a little drive in the country. Wow, who's that? That's Joe. He's a friend of mine, okay. He's uh, going a bit fast there, but um, we're not really just in the country. We're on a track and we're just trying out our Model 3s. Now Joe's car is completely standard and a standard Model 3 performance makes a very good track car in fact, but of course it can be improved. So what we're going to do today is have a look at a very cost-effective way of making your car handle a bit better even if it's just for for road driving so let's watch Joe's car as he comes through this tight corner now just see what happens well you can see it's leaning over there to the right of course the weight is transferring to the outside and the suspension does a good job but it can't really cope with all that weight at that sort of speed on track so we've got to find a way of managing that and uh, ideally a way that's not going to completely ruin the car's ride quality on the road. So here we are a few weeks later, Joe's come along with the car and we're going to be upgrading his suspension with some parts. Uh, we feel that this is going to make the car handle a lot better on track but also on the road uh, but it's, it's not really going to adversely affect the overall comfort. So what are we talking about here? Well some of you may have already guessed we're talking about sway bars they are also known as anti-roll bars, which is maybe a more descriptive name for them. But they're effectively just metal bars which act as type of spring. So how do they work? What do they do? Well, it's pretty much what it says on the tin. Anti-roll bars are bars that stop the car from rolling. Now, in some situations, you might want to encourage more roll, in effect, in off-roading where you want all four tyres to be in contact with the ground all the time for maximum traction, you actually want the car to drop a little bit more in those situations. So there are roll bar disconnect kits that are available, which allow the vehicle to articulate more and to just make sure that there's always going to be a wheel that's in contact with the ground. But all that off-roading stuff's a bit too muddy for my liking, so let's go back and look at how anti-roll bars work with the Model 3. So first of all, here's just a general diagram of what an anti-roll bar looks like. It's uh, metal bars we said before, it's anchored at the suspension here and here, and also on the chassis of the car here and here. So what it's doing is in a corner, it's effectively transferring weight from one tyre to the other tyre. If we see the suspension going up on one side, what will happen is the anti-roll bar will twist along its length, but the force will be resisted because it's anchored on the other side. So what we can say about anti-roll bar then is that it resists roll and that's a great thing because it means the car is more stable, the wheels are kept closer to their optimum alignment and that makes the tyres work a lot better and give you more grip. Now there are usually two anti-roll bars, one fitted at the front, one fitted at the back and this is how it looks on a Model 3, you can see the suspension uh, underneath the skin there and if we isolate the anti-roll bars you'll see that there's one here at the front and uh, one at the rear. So now let's go back to Joe at the workshop. We've got the car on the ramp now. We're going to take that up in the air in a second and then we're going to start to do the work. Remove the aero covers first of all uh, and then start to take off the factory fitted anti-roll bars. Now this job is not that difficult in fact. Uh, you could even do it without full ramps like this. It can be done just using axle stands even. Uh, it's uh, quite a quick process but we're going to speed up Joe here, another Joe, who's going to be working on the car today uh, just to make it a little bit faster for us. So while that's going on, I'm just going to talk about something I mentioned earlier, which is the fact that anti-roll bar upgrades generally don't affect the ride quality too much. The car, when it's on a level road and uh, it's not cornering, it's not putting any load into those bars. So in fact it's just sitting there exactly as it would if it had the standard factory anti-roll bars on. And that means that you're not affecting the comfort of the car, you're only improving the handling when the car's cornering and that's really getting the best of both worlds. The other aspect of uh, this kind of upgrade is it's quite a simple product. It's a couple of metal bars and some fittings and the actual amount of labour involved as you'll see isn't that great either. So it's a really cost effective way of giving your car a handling upgrade. So now we've got the factory anti-roll bars and the replacement ones on the floor, we can have a look at the differences between the two. And the first thing to look at is there's one mounting hole in the standard bar, so there's no adjustment there. In the replacement bar we've got three different holes which give you three adjustments for stiffness. The closer that hole is to the bar itself, the stiffer the setting will be. 
And that adjustment is particularly useful if you want to take your car on track because it enables you to fine tune the handling of your car. So before we put the uprated bars on the car, let's just compare them with the ones that we've just taken off. And we can see that the big difference is that they are thicker. They are on average about three millimeters thicker than the factory examples. And that means that they are overall stiffer and more able to resist the roll. Now, one thing you might think is that if you're putting bigger, thicker bars of metal on your car, you're going to be adding weight and that's not necessarily a good thing. But actually, these anti-roll bars are hollow. Um, a lot of them are. Some, some on some cars are solid, but um, the uprated ones that we've got here are hollow. So you're not really adding any more weight overall to the car than you would be with the standard ones. Now, a couple of other things I'd like to show you about aftermarket anti-roll bars and how they're made. One is the end part of the bar where it's attached to the tube or the solid bar itself can be welded as in this example um, and they're really to be avoided because welds can cause hot spots and stress points which could later on lead to cracking and the bar failing which is not great so if you're choosing an anti-roll bar look for just one piece of metal it's formed out of one solid tube or bar so you can see on these ones, the ends are basically crimped over as is a hollow bar. So there are no welds, nothing there to fail. Uh, it's as strong as it can be. Here's another aftermarket Model 3 anti-roll bar. I just wanted to show you a couple of things on this one, which is uh, worth noting. First of all, it had the welded ends. So as I've said before, that really is to be avoided. Uh, but it did have another problem in addition to that. If we take a look uh, from a different angle look close up, we can see there's a witness mark just there, which shows that something's rubbing against the control arm near the roll bar. And from the other side, we can see that it's actually the end of this drop link here, uh, which means that the anti-roll bar was just made incorrectly to the wrong dimensions. It's too long. So as you can see, even though they're a very simple item, really, there's a good and bad. Have a look at the engineering before you buy. Don't just go on a brand name. We've actually chosen these ones because they're particularly good quality. They're made by a company called Redwood and TiVo Solutions are supplying them in the UK, of course. So if you want a good quality set of anti-roll bars for your Model 3, these are the ones to go for. Now, one final thing that we're going to look at before we go back and see how Joe's getting on with the fitting is to point out there is an end link or drop link that's used to connect the ends of the roll bars to the suspension. And they are often upgraded as well to adjustable end links, which allows you to make sure that the length of those are optimised for whatever settings you put your anti-roll bars on. They also tend to make the whole thing last longer and give you a little bit more precise yeah. feel in the steering. We covered this recently in a video that we made, which we'll link to at the end of this one, uh, which was comparing the standard 2021 refresh Model 3 performance with our car with all the goodies fitted. And uh, it's interesting to see the comparison there. So have a look at that video if you didn't watch it already. Even just from that, you would, you would probably feel a difference on the road, yeah. Um, Let's go back and see how Joe's car's progressing. And we've almost finished. Uh, just not got the air covers to go back on. Make sure they're firmly attached, of course. And this job has really not taken a lot of time. It's taken about an hour in a good workshop. It shouldn't take more than two hours, absolute maximum. Uh, there's nothing tricky in this, no alignment needed afterwards. So as soon as the car's off the ramp, Joe's ready to go. And we put a camera in the car and asked him if on the way home, he could give us a genuine reaction to how he feels the car has changed since we put these uprated anti-roll bars on. So, first impressions driving home, you know, a few minutes in the car, a few country roads, more importantly, a few little mini roundabouts to chuck it through. It's definitely sharper, it definitely feels firmer. I mean, this thing was a fairly firm and flat car to start with, but just in those corners, when I first turned it in, it just feels like it's dead flat. It just feels like it wants to be really, really flat. Um, it, it's noticeable, that those anti-roll bars are really making a difference to me. But in terms of general handling and drive, just, you know, as we're driving along, the suspension, is it harder? No, of course it isn't. We've not changed that. So in terms of use as a daily car, it's a great motto thing to put the anti-roll bars on to stiffen it up for those track days. But for now, when you're just driving around, no difference at all. It just feels so planted. It feels like you're in a bit of a, a, a go-car. I don't know what, it's just, yeah. Let's just say it feels like this car was chuckable to start with. It feels even more chuckable than before. <laughs> I just want to chuck it into Ben's.
that's all you want to do now you've got these twenty roll bars you just go ah oh, another bend I can chuck it in and it just it just it's so flat I, I can't believe how much of a difference just one piece of metal across the front of your car is going to actually make to the handling but it it really has yeah it's just feels that much tighter, a lot tighter in fact. <laughs> it's just fun. You just want to go hunting corners now. <laughs> it's just fun going around a roundabout. You just turn in and it just keeps turning and turning and you just you expect you to sort of dive a bit and give, it just doesn't, it just wants to keep turning. It's great fun. It's it's definitely better. I guess I have to ask myself, you know, is, is this anti-roll bar kit worth it on first impressions? Even just on road use like this? Definitely yes. I mean, for, for the money you're spending, the, the difference in handling, the way it transforms the car to be that much firmer, that much stiffer in the corners, that sort of, you know, just more chuckable, way more fun. Can't wait to get it on the track. Well, Joe seems quite happy with his upgrade there, which is great to hear, and normally I'd be taking you out on track again and showing you just what difference it made to the car. But unfortunately, since we did the fitting, uh, all the tracks have been closed and they're still closed and we're waiting for them to open. So that's not going to happen for a little while yet, but we will do that. We also got other videos that we want to make on other suspension upgrades and how they affect the handling. So there's going to be a whole raft of those coming up later on in the year. But for now, you're just going to have to enjoy me driving around on my own on an empty track, uh, just sort of having a bit of fun really. If you want to see more track driving, let us know in the comments, but in the meantime, please do click like and subscribe if you haven't done already, and if you enjoyed today's video, that's great. If you want more details on the products we've been discussing, that's going to be in the links in the description below. But all that remains for me to say is see you next time, and bye for now. <laughs>